just there. Praise God, hallelujah. Father, I just want to praise you, I just want to honor you for this time, Lord, that you have chosen me to stand in front of your congregation, your church, and to share from your word. Lord, I just give myself in your hands, I just give my broken words in your hands, Lord, my uh, English, everything, Father Lord, which is uh, not excellent, which is not eloquent, but Father, I just pray that you will take control, you'll take control of my spirit, Father Lord, and Father, you will speak through me. Lord, I just surrender in your presence and I give everything in your hands. For Father, you speak through me for, so that your congregation will be blessed, so that they will receive the word, Father Lord, and it will bring fruit in their life. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, church. Amen. So, yeah, Pastor Mike is right. I wasn't actually ready. Last uh, Sunday, uh, Pastor Vicky announced in front of the church. So, I spoken to the preacher and... Uh, uh, he still hasn't heard from the Lord. And it was just that he said, and God started to speak to me. And just God started to speak to me in such a powerful way that I have never had this experience before. But it was a bit too much. Like every single day, I was getting verses and verses and verses. And I said, God, what do you want me to do? It's just 45 minutes I've got there in the church, maybe even less. So what, what do you want me to do? There's so much that I need to, you're giving me. And uh, I just said this. And even yesterday morning, I was just uh, sleeping and I just woke up and I had a verse again and I just wrote that verse. And it did not end there. And throughout the worship, God has been speaking to me. I was just thinking to summarize what he has given to me and just, okay, make a small sermon. But he's just speaking to me. So to be very honest, yes, I don't know what's going to happen today. But... <laughs> So, but whatever it is, uh, you pray to God that I'll finish in time. Otherwise, I will make sure that you sit here till I finish my sermon. <laughs> so, uh, praise God. You know, the inspiration for this sermon came to me while I was leading worship in church. And it came to me by someone who was to preach that day. And through their life, through their dedication... God started to speak to me and I just kept on taking those verses and just got it wasn't clear but since this last week where I don't know what happened then God just told me just I want you to uh, not just fast a few small things I just want you to fast uh, this whole week fast food and water and it was quite difficult for me man but I did and God just kept on pouring his word and I tell you, Chair, sometimes it's, it's, it's really powerful. It's so many things that God speaks you, to your own personal life. And this is my, always my request to God. God, whenever you ask me to preach, do not let me be the one who stands here and dictate to your people. But speak to me, speak to my life. So that what I have to preach to your church would bless my life as well. And it has been a transformation. Just to prepare for this sermon, there has been so many things in my own life that I have looked at and I have just viewed that, okay, this is something that I need to improve. This is something that I need to correct in my life. This is something that I need to work more to make it better. And praise the Lord, it has been working and it has been an amazing experience just to uh, learn about this. So without any further delay, I'll ask uh, uh, Keith to just put the verses, uh, the presentation on. So the, the word that I got from for today's sermon was give to the Lord what belongs to Him. Give to God what belongs to Him. And the verses for that is from Matthew chapter 22 verse 21. And when Jesus was speaking and His uh, disciples and people were asking the question, is it... Uh, is it right for us to pay taxes? And they said to them, Give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, but give to God what belongs to God. Give to God what belongs to God. And you know, I was, um, I was sharing with the church from the type of offering, and that is the verse that we normally share there, and I read through it, and at that time, just something small hit me. Okay, what is it that belongs to God? Everything belongs to God. 
But what specifically? Why did Jesus actually say that? Give to the Lord what belongs to the Lord. And uh, I just forget it. I did not remember it at that time. But then when I was actually uh, preparing for my sermon, this verse again hit me. And God actually made this the title of my sermon. Give to God what belongs to God. And today, church, I want to learn with you and I just want to understand it with you. What is it that belongs to God? We heard from the last sermon with Pastor uh, Betsy spoke that find your treasure in troubles. And in that, he also said that everything that we have, it belongs to the Lord. In God, we have everything. So what specifically was Jesus talking about? So, you know, to, to learn about this, I just put some question marks and I thought maybe I can ask a few people in the church. Okay, what is it? What do you think belongs to the Lord? Anybody? Any volunteer? Otherwise, I can ask. Yes. Glory belongs to the Lord. Yes, yes, very true. Sorry? Our hearts belong to the Lord. Very true. Money. Money. Yes, grace. Very true. Money belongs to the Lord. Praise God. Kingship belongs to the Lord. Yes, amazing. Yeah. Our life belongs to the Lord. Praise the Lord. All right. What is it that we have belongs to the Lord? Very good, very good. Praise and worship belongs to the Lord as well. And you know what? When I was um, thinking about this question, I said, okay, let me go to the beginning. Okay, God made Adam. But how did he make Adam? And you know, when I was doing my uh, reading on that and I came to Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, it says that God form, formed man from dust. That is why um, the word Adam, it is also called that son of the red earth, made from red earth. This is the uh, translation of the word Adam. And I said, okay, God made man out of earth. But why did God made us like this? Why did God give us this image? Sorry? He made us. Louder, Ruth, please. He made us after his own image. He made us out of clay, but he made us out of his own image. And then, what did he do next? He breathed. He breathed in us. And what happened after that? We became alive. Praise the Lord. So a couple of things that we see God did here. Firstly, he made us out of clay out of mud, right? He molded us after his own image. But why did God have to do that? He made so many other things and why did he just have to mold us after his own image? And then not just say to us, okay, be alive. And we would have been alive, he would have just said. He actually chose to breathe into us. He, breath, uh, he put us the breath of life in, our, uh, in us so that we could be alive. And when I was actually just uh, uh, thinking that as well, I said, okay, fine, God, you did that, you did that, and that was really, really good. Yes, praise God, you made us, now we are alive and well, and this is something that you have given us. But after that, what happened? What did Adam do? Came to life. Adam came to life, but what did after, after that, what did Adam do? Adam and Eve. They sinned. <laughs> what did Adam do, Alan? <laughs> Listen to his wife. Yes, praise the Lord. Yes, see, this is something sometimes we don't really need to do. Yes. So, Michelle, please. Alan has just told me next time if I don't listen to you, it's because someone in the church has spoken. Yes. So I have to listen to that. Maybe it is God speaking to me. Yes. So Adam listened to his wife. And what happened after that, Alan? <laughs> Okay, spirit of manipulation, wow. Yes, so Michelle's spirit of manipulation. So it's not in me the spirit of manipulation, yes. So day before yesterday, he was accusing me. You have the spirit of manipulation. You manipulated me. So I don't have the spirit of manipulation. Look, Alan just confirmed. 
Uh, Alan, you are my good friend. You are a very good friend. So what happened after that? After manipulation? They sinned. And they fell short of God's glory. Something beautiful that God created and gave man his own will. But what happened? They sinned and fell short of God's glory. So what did God have to do? He had to send his son so that through his sacrifice we could be saved. We could be born again. We were born once in the shape of Adam but it was needed for us to be born again so that we could be united with our God. And can we see the next slide please? Yeah. So if you see here, when Jesus was speaking to um, his disciples and to Nicodemus, he actually said, Jesus answered, uh, answered him in John chapter 3 verse 3, Truly, truly, I say to you. You know, there are certain verses in the Bible when you have to emphasize, you actually use the word very truly or you say truly, truly. It means that it is very important. Jesus could have just said it. I say to you, there are many instances where Jesus spoke to the people in congregation and said, look, I say to you, I speak to you. But this time he says to them, truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Unless one is born again, unless we are born again, we cannot see the kingdom of God. And you know, later on, um, it was asked of Jesus, okay, how can it be possible? What, are we going to go back into our mother, mother's home and we are going to be born again? Uh, then this is the only way how we can be born again. This is how human beings think. This is how common knowledge would say, would say anybody who is uh, uh, not a Christian, anybody who is not born, born again, anybody who is not spiritual and anybody who will think from a worldly perspective, they will say, this is crazy. How, we, have all, we are already born. We are flesh and blood. How more can we be born again? Do we need to die and then be born again? What is the other way? But I tell you one thing, God explains to them in John chapter six, John chapter three, verse six, flesh gives birth to flesh, but spirit gives birth to spirit. We need to be born again in spirit so that we can receive the spirit of God. And when we have the Spirit of God in us, that is when the promise in us will be fulfilled. The new birth through Jesus Christ will take us to the kingdom of heaven. Amen. And church, without that, there is no chance for anyone. If you think that without you being born again, just by doing good deeds, you can enter the kingdom of heaven. Sorry, the word of God does not say that. And I believe word of God and I believe what Jesus taught us rather than any other man in the world. We can be uh, the best at everything but if we do not have the spirit of God we will not see the kingdom of heaven because Jesus emphasized on this that truly, truly Jesus told the importance of that. So what is important for us? The spirit of God. And through his sacrifice, through coming on this earth, Jesus has opened the doorway so that the Spirit of God is now in us when we ask of it. When we believe in Jesus Christ, when we believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, then we receive the Holy Spirit. Can we have the next slide, please? God paid the price for us and now we are His dwelling place. Pastor Jackie was just sitting right next to me and there's a topic that she's going to be teaching later on today and a lot of the verses match there. And trust me, I did not uh, consult with Pastor Jackie that Pastor Jackie, what are you going to be teaching today and so that I can prepare my sermon in the same way. And there's a lot of things that have been said throughout the worship. I did not consult with my wife. My wife did not know what I was going to preach on. I did not consult with Pastor Jackie. I did not consult with Stephen. I did not consult with anybody neither Isaac uh, uh, nor our brother here that uh, Alicia that what I'm going to share today 
nobody knows not even me to be very honest the last night was sure what i'm going to be preaching today because it was so much to preach but i i i, I actually just uh, uh, as i said okay god you want to take this slow i i want to be vibrant i want to be like excited i want to speak in a loud voice today but you've just made a sermon for me and you're just taking it so slow even like i'm getting a little bit okay you want to take it at a slow pace slow pace you want to speak to your church in a different way okay i'll surrender i'll surrender because nothing like this has ever happened to me when i was i'm ready to uh, prepare a sermon but this is the first time god has actually done in this way so church i do apologize if you find that i am slow and i'm taking it at a slow pace i'm not doing it the holy spirit is so you got to excuse me for today next time i'll be on fire <laughs> So when I was actually preaching God pays the price and it clearly is written in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 16 and 17 Do you not know that you are God's temple and God's spirit dwells in you and if anyone destroys God's temple God will destroy him for God's temple is holy and you are his temple a body that was made from clay God chose that to be his temple God chose that to be his dwelling place and further on again in the book of Corinthians Uh, it says do you not know that your bodies are temples of the holy spirit who is in you whom you have received from god you are not your own you were bought at a price therefore honor god with your bodies amen and then again you know when i was we just uh, looking at this verses again and just i reflected back to that original verse give to god what belongs to him give to god what belongs to him give to caesar what belongs to caesar but give to god what belongs to him and you know god is not after our money a lot of times we think okay if we give our money to the lord he is going to actually bless us and that is what we need to actually give to the lord and bring to him that is maybe this is what Jesus was actually um uh, sharing with his disciples and he was telling the uh, tax collectors and the Sadducees and the Pharisees that give to God what belongs to him and give to Caesar what belongs to the Caesar he is not after money he has everything he gave you all the money he created this earth he created us he created everything he created this roof above us he gave us the wisdom he gave us the understanding to do all these things but still he says give to the lord what belongs to him now god created adam with his own hands and he breathed in him and then through the sacrifice of his son jesus christ he gave adam the holy spirit which is in us dwells in this very body and you know what god wants from you today he wants you he wants us he wants me this is what god wants from us this is why he made us after his own image this is why jesus said to his disciples and to the uh, sadducees and pharisees that give me a coin give me a 2 denarius coin and whose image is on it and they said it is caesar's and he said give to caesar what belongs to him but give to god what belongs to him whose image are we made at yeah. whose image are we made after god's image you and me we are god's image and give to god what belongs to him can you the next slide please You know church I was thinking about these things that there are three things that God actually did and this is what we have now he gave us his breath the very breath that we breathe it belongs to the lord because he is the one who gave it to us his own breath not the breath of angels not anything else but his own breath he gave to us he gave us the holy spirit and he chose our bodies to be the temple of holy spirit he has sanctified our bodies to be his temple when we have breath like okay 
Can I have a volunteer? Can anybody come and be a volunteer for me? <laughs> Stephen. Praise God. What can you do with your breath? What do you normally do with your breath? Okay, what else? <laughs> no, 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 no. Let me, let me, let me, let me. Okay. Sorry. Anything else? No. Breathing and a lot of. Okay. I want you to talk to me without using your breath. <laughs> it's impossible. So, breathing is not just to hold while you're swimming. It's also used for your talking. Now, Stephen, you sang a song in the um, prayer time today. What was that song? <laughs> okay, sing any song. You give life. You give life. Okay, that's it. <laughs> but sing that song without using your breath. Sorry? Try it. <laughs> You're still using your breath from your nose. Yes. Okay. It's not possible. See, it's not possible. Thank you so much, Stephen. Yes, thank you. Can we have a round of applause for Stephen? So he just tried to sing without using his breath. It's not possible. Actually, I tried to do that uh, yesterday as well. I was actually trying to put my hand on my mouth. Using my breath, and it was not possible. You know, every single thing that God does, there is a purpose behind it. Every single thing. He gave us breath, and He wants us to give it to Him. Give it back to Him. But how can we give it back to Him? Can anybody tell me how can we give it back to Him? Praise and worship and prayer. Praise and worship and prayer. You know, we were given an opportunity to actually uh, share some thoughts, me and Sister Linda, on prayer and worship. And you know, when we were actually, uh, when I was actually as I, uh, preparing for the sermon, that same things and that same thoughts and those teachings came to me as well. Prayer and worship. And you know, I started thinking about that. Something I shared there as well. That sometimes when you just pray, right, it's something different. But when you pray and worship, it's something different. It's even more powerful. I don't know if any one of you have felt it, but I have felt in my own prayer life that when you pray, yeah, you get the power, you get the anointing. But sometimes, you know, when you start worshiping while you're praying, it just takes you to a different zone. In a different, like you are connected with God in a different way. Something powerful starts happening. That has happened to me. And you know what today, church? This is what God wants to speak to you. It's his very breath that he has given you. He wants you to give it to him. That is what Jesus meant when he said to you, give to the Lord what belongs to him. His Holy Spirit that is in you, that resides in you. How can we give that Holy Spirit back to him? How can that Holy Spirit minister back to him? Can anybody tell me, please? Any volunteers? Or I can ask some people from the back. Any volunteers from that last row, please? From those last rows? Any volunteer? <laughs> Look, Alan is just saying, that's why I don't sit in the back. Like, like, guys, come on. You, you, you guys got to say something. Say anything, even if it is wrong. Otherwise, you know, Alan is going to keep on making fun of you guys. That you need to sit in the front. <laughs> oh. oh, okay. We've just understood how we can use our breath to um, honor God. How can we give our breath to God? No, no, Sister Linda. I want to listen to them. My wife did not even understand the question. What was the question? So look, maybe I'm not doing something right here. I need to be a little bit more proactive in my approach. And I need to be quick because I'm taking a lot of time. So please, how can we use our spirit 
to glorify God. How can? Pray in the spirit. Worship in the spirit. Why? Because God says, I am after worshippers who worship me in spirit and in truth. truth. You know the truth is, our lives, that we mean it when we worship God. Not just worship God for the sake of it. The words are written there and we keep on reading them. We worship him because we mean it. We pray because we mean it. The truth is in us. If we have, you know, the thing is, the truth is, when we go to watch a three hours movie in the cinema and we sit there and we are open with our ears and our eyes and we want to watch every single clip. When my wife watches a movie, if she misses anything, she comes back and she rewinds and she watches it again so that she does not miss that section. Because she's dedicated. She wants the truth. She wants to know. She wants to understand. She wants to have her concepts clear. That is truth. That is the type of truth and dedication and desire that God is after. Amen. He wants you to come in His presence, open, honest, and in spirit. Because that is, these are the type of worshippers that God desires. Then, the last thing, how do we honor God with our bodies? We've got these bodies here. How do we honor God? Sorry? Serving others, yeah, praise God. Anything else? Keeping, holy. <laughs> Keeping it holy, praise God. Praise God. That is really, really good answer as well. Anything else? Mm-hmm. Giving it to Him, yes. Mm-hmm. Obedience. You see, we had a very powerful sermon here by our pastor, Vicky, who preached something about the postures. Do you remember that? Or we don't? Do you remember that? You know, when we come into God's presence, we need to have a certain posture. You know, today I was preaching and I was going to go back and I was going to just quickly revise my sermon and do all of these things uh, during the worship time. This was in my mind when I actually came. I said, look, I can sit back and I'll just quickly do all these bits and pieces and conclude the sermon that I want to do. But, you know, then just Spirit spoke to me and said, look, don't worry about it. Just go in the front. You're speaking to your own family. Even if you make any mistakes, don't worry about it. I will speak through you and i said that's it i stood there i came at the front pastor may asked me and said pastor mike i'll come later on but i came at the front why because i knew god wanted me to worship god wanted me uh, to use my body to glorify his name he wanted me to give my body back to him there was a reason that i understood why did god ask me to fast for this week because he wanted to clean my body through fasting, we can honor God because we fasted for Him. We say to Him, God, this body, this food is not important to us, but You are. Amen. You can offer your body to God by keeping it holy and pure. Because our God is a holy God and He cannot see sin. And I tell you church, whenever we sin through our bodies, We are not just sinning ourselves, but we are sinning against God because His Holy Spirit lives in us. And wherever we go to sin or whatever we do through our bodies, we are actually making Holy Spirit a part of that sin. That is what God wants to speak to you today. Give to God what belongs to Him. Do not give it to sin. Do not give it to sin. Because our God is holy and he cannot see sin. God has called us to be grateful and thankful to him. Can we see the next slide please? And I tell you this one thing. When we actually offer ourselves, when we offer our bodies to him, we are blessed. Now we often, uh, I offer, I uh, I love this chapter, Malachi chapter 3, from verse 6 to 12. I just love this. Can we actually have those verses up, please, from the Bible, if you don't mind? And you know these verses, and when I actually teach about tithe and offering, and I I just, I've memorized these verses. You see, there are things when we actually uh, do, sometimes we don't even understand that we are actually doing those things. We are robbing God. It just says that um, you rob God. You rob God of tithes and offerings. 
And you know, I was teaching about tithes and offering, and it's the first time ever when I was teaching about tithes and offering this time, I actually said to the, uh, uh, the people there with me, that tithe and offering is not just about money. Tithe and offering is about you, about your time with God as well. It's not just about money. Because God wants you. He does not want your money. He wants your heart. So, I the Lord do not change. So you are the descendants of Jacob are not destroyed. Have you got to the last verse? Ever since the time of your ancestors, you have turned away from my decrees and have not kept me. Return to me and I will return to you, says the Lord Almighty. But you ask, how are we to return? Will a mere mortal rob God? Yet you rob me. But you ask, how are we robbing you? In tithes and offerings, you are under a curse, the whole nation, because you are robbing me. Church today, you know, sometimes we think, okay, we are giving our tithe and offering, but that's it. We don't need to do anything else. I'm telling you today, you are robbing God. We are robbing God, including me, in our tithe and offering, when we do not give him the time that is due to him. Bring to the Lord what is due to him. It never says in these verses that tithe and offering mean the money. Bring your money to the Lord. It says bring to your tithes and offerings in the storehouse. It also means come to the storehouse. Come to the church. Amen. Be a part of the church. Be a part of the congregation so that you can be blessed. And God will bless you and he will remove the church curse from your life. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. Test me in this says the Lord Almighty and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessings that there will be not there will not be room enough to store it church when you are faithful in your tithe and your offering he opens up his heavens and what does he do to you when you are faithful in your time to God when you give your tithe and offering of your time to God he gives you so much blessing that you are not able to contain it. Yes. When you offer your breath, your spirit, your body to the Lord, when you bring it faithfully in His presence, He blesses you so much more Amen. that you cannot even contain it. Amen. Elisha, a man of God, had God's blessing. And even when was it? When he was dead, the presence of God, the blessing was still in his bones. Mm. That people threw a dead man in his grave and he came back to life. Mm. Because he gave himself to the Lord. Yeah. And God returned the favor. God blessed him so much that he was not able to contain that anointing that was on him. Mm. Even after he died, the anointing was there. When the disciples, when the apostles gave their life to Christ, God blessed them so much that Peter used to walk and there was healing in his shadow. Church, today God is speaking to you. Jesus Christ spoke to his disciples that you will do even greater works than I. Amen. That is his promise. And heavens and earth can pass away, but his promises will not pass away. Are you ready to give the tithe and offering of your time to the Lord? Are you ready to give God back your body that He has made after His own image? If you are, this is what God is going to go do through you. Wherever you stand, people will see that you are different. Wherever you walk, people will be healed by, the, by your shadow. People will touch you. They will be healed. Because he will give you so much more. He will bless you abundantly. Because of that sacrifice that you have brought in his presence. And that sacrifice is yourself. Amen. Church, I tell you this one thing. Coming into God's presence is such a powerful thing. Sometimes we think that maybe working on a Sunday will give us more money. Sometimes we think maybe working on a Wednesday where we can actually have more money will bless us more. Honestly, it won't. 
The only thing that can bless you is being in God's presence. Even the word of God says, a day in his presence is better than? Better than? Tell it to your neighbor on your left and on your right. A day in God's presence is better than thousands elsewhere. A day in his presence is better than thousands elsewhere. You can work for thousand days. And you can just sit in his presence and do nothing. I tell you, you'll be blessed more than those thousand days. Because I stand in front of you as a living testimony of that promise. And I tell you, church, you can carry on working all your life. You can earn as much money as you want. Maybe you'll become a multi-millionaire, maybe even a billionaire. But if God's blessing is on you, I have seen people. They are billionaires and they cannot even enjoy a single morsel of bread. You know, when you fast, after that you're so hungry, you really want to eat something, you want to drink something, you know. There is craving in your body. Nothing else you can see at that time. Like, I'm sort of, um, yeah, sorry Michelle. I, I do get agitated as well if I'm fasting and she hasn't cooked anything. And so, I, <laughs> she knows if you make sure that there is some food in the home when I'm fasting. I don't know how she finds out that I'm fasting. I don't even tell her, but she does. And she is a very good wife, so she does uh, make sure that I have something to eat at home. So thank you so much, Michelle, for that. But if you have all the wealth and you can't even enjoy it, what's the point of it? What's the point of it, church? And I tell you that if you are faithful to him, he can do so much more for you, so many amazing and powerful things that are beyond our imagination. Just coming to him gives the opportunity that he will speak to us. You know, can we go back to the slides again, please? And promises of God and I, yeah, John verse 4, verse 12, the last slide please. You will even do greater things than Jesus. You will do even greater things than Jesus when you trust in him, when you follow him with all your heart. And I tell you church today, I don't know what God is going to do today, but I know this effect for sure, that God is going to do something powerful. Now my wife mentioned there, Paul and Silas, they were just worshipping in the prison. They were just worshipping. They were just praying and worshipping and singing hymns. They didn't have any good instruments. I don't know if they were worship leaders. I don't even know if they were good singers. Does it, is it really important in God's presence to be a good singer? Is it really important in God's presence to be a good instrument player, a good musician? Does God even care about those things? He has not said to me, I want those worshippers who will worship me in a very nice way. He will play the best instruments or he will sing best. I will only accept those worship. He doesn't. And when Paul and Silas were worshipping, what happened? What happened? Their chains were broken. Not only their chains, but all the chains of the prisoners were broken. Not only their chairs, chains. And that is what God can do through you when you honor God. Amen. He will not only break your chains, but he will break the chains of everyone who is around you. He will start blessing people through you. And church, I tell you that if he can do it for Paul and Silas, he can do it for you. He can do it for you today. Through praise and worship, people have won the wars without even lifting a finger. When you honor God, the battle belongs to Him. Amen. What does this uh, song say? So when I fight, I fight on my knees with my hands lifted high. Because I know that the battle belongs to you. Amen. The battle does not belong to us. We can keep on fighting the battles of this world. We can keep on fighting the battles uh, of finances and everything. And we can 
try to be worried or everything, but by getting worried, can you change anything? No. You cannot even make the gray, one gray hair of your, uh, 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 to black. You cannot do that. And for God, He knows even how many hairs we have on our head. Can you imagine? He knows how many hair we have on our head. He has accounted every single thing in our life. He knows what we need. All he asks of us is give to the Lord what belongs to him. Are you ready church today to give to God what belongs to him? You know, I have so many things to share today about praise and worship, how it reveals your destiny to, to us and how worship helps us to hear from the Lord. And it's all written in the verses, if you, verses, if you can go to the next slide, please. And Paul, Paul and Silas, look at the third part. I did not, my wife did not know that I was going to share this today in my uh, preaching, Paul and Silas, and she shared that. And the victory that uh, came to uh, um, Israel and Second Chronicles chap uh, chapter 20, we can clearly read that. There's so many that we can actually read there that God gave victory to the nation of Israel just through prayer and worship. They didn't do anything. A David, a man after God's own heart. He was just a shepherd boy. And he actually knew nothing that one day he's going to be the greatest king in Israel. But he only knew one thing, that he can worship his God. Yeah. He did not know his destiny, but God knew his destiny because he honored God through his prayer and through his worship. And not only that, you know, further on we see that David did not used to just come into God's presence and just worship in a light way. He used to dance in front of God. He used to play music and instruments and he used to just go all crazy. So much so that his own wife said to him that you disgrace yourself in front of your servants. You disgrace yourself. And he said to her, I disgrace myself. God chose me over your father. And for his glory, I will disgrace myself even more. Amen. Because he knew that what God has given to him, when he's going to give it back to him, God is going to bless me. Church, you know, I was in prayer and worship today and I was just at the back and I saw when the praise and worship started in the church that there were very few people and slowly people started to come and I'm not accusing anybody because I am all, I was also in the same boat as some of you today. We need to honor God. We need to give our praise and our worship and our adoration and our prayer to Him in spirit and in truth. And in spirit and in truth is when we honor him on time, when we sacrifice our times, when we sacrifice our comfort and come in his presence on time to honor him. Because I tell you one thing, every single second in God's presence matters. Because he continually keeps on blessing you every single second when you are in his presence. When you are there, when you are worshipping Him in spirit and in truth. When there are desires in your heart, when there are needs in your life that you want God to give to you. You need to be in His presence. And you know, in the beginning of my sermon, I said this to you. That I got inspired for this message by someone who was struggling. Who was struggling. Maybe with even life and death. And they were struggling with a huge loss at that very moment when they had to do something in church. But you know what? They decided to honor God and they said, it does not matter. Even the situation is critical. Even if I have to fight for my life, even I have to fight for my health. I have made a commitment in the house of the Lord. I'm going to come and I'm going to honor that and I will fulfill my commitment to the Lord. And you know, looking at that, God inspired me today to actually share this word with you. Amen. I'm not at liberty to share the name or the situation of the person. But I just want to share that with you today that 
when you serve God and when you are faithful to him to the very point of your death only then you will get the crown of everlasting life Amen. because it's not me who is stating that it is the word of God that states that Amen. and church I tell you this one thing sometimes we complain and we mourn and I am one of those who does complain and who does mourn but who are we to complain and who are we to mourn when God has blessed us with so much more you know God did so much amazing things for Israelites honestly I wish I was in at that time and I could have actually seen what God did for us all those great miracles dividing the sea and taking them over the rivers and like uh, giving them so many uh, uh, things giving them food heavenly food to eat oh, such an amazing thought but every single step they were mourning and complaining and at the end they were so close this close to the promised land but God said enough is enough no more you're not going to enter into the promised land maybe today to some of you God is speaking maybe this is the time for God to give you the promises he, he have for you maybe this is the time that you may enter into the promised land that you always have in your heart maybe this is the very moment that God is speaking to you or God is there to give you something that your heart desires the most but at this time maybe you're wasting this time thinking about the things of the earth maybe you are wasting this time looking at your phone maybe you're wasting this time speaking to each other maybe you're wasting this time laughing and giggling about other things this very open minute it could be that time because none of us know when God is going to bless you we know that he will bless you but we do not know that very moment this may be that very time and that very opportunity are you going to let it go like the Israelites did and what happened none of them were able to enter into the promised land only those two whose name rejoiced whose name praised the God who knew that the battle belongs to the Lord you know church there's so much more that I can actually share but you know I want to give this opportunity to you today to decide for your own self that do you want to honor God with all your heart all your mind all your spirit your body your thoughts or do you just want to uh, say that's fine I've just come to church everything will happen itself you know the word of God says ask and it shall be given to you seek and you will find knock and the door will be opened for you sometimes you know we do not open our lips if we do not open our lips how will God fill your lips with his promises I just like to read this one last verse and we can end it from Psalm 51 verse 15 sorry uh, Psalm 81 verse 10 sorry sorry about that I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt open wide your mouth and I will fill it Amen. I am the God who brought you out of Egypt God brought, brought Israelites out of Egypt. He's the God who has brought you out of your Egypt. But what else he says? Open your mouth and I will fill it. Church, this is the very time. Are you going to just sleep through this time and not understand what God is speaking to you? Or are you going to open your heart and open your mouths in his presence so that he can fill them? I didn't have any intention to actually say this verse. This verse was given to me during the worship. And also this verse was given to me that many are invited but only few are chosen. All of you are invited to be a part of this kingdom. But are you the chosen? Who do you want to be? Do you want to be the chosen one? 
Because if you want to be, now is the time and opportunity. If there is anything in your life that you have been lacking, if you have not been honoring God with your body, if you have not been honoring God with your voices, if you have not been praying to Him, if you just think you can remain silent and God will bless you, God blesses everyone, but He has said this is His word. Open your mouths and He will fill it. He has created you. He has given you this very breath to praise Him. As the worship sing, team will sing, and I'll hand it over to Pastor. Uh, Pastor, no, he's not Pastor as yet. He soon will be. I'll ask, uh, give it to our brother Stephen to um, take us through and lead us through by the power of the Holy Spirit. But I do believe strongly that this is the time, this is the opportunity that God wants to do something special in your life. And uh, God bless you all, church.